Welcome to Homework Answers. We're going through the book Programming Logic and Design, 8th edition by Joyce Farrell. In this video, we cover Chapter 1, Exercise 4. Just a few quick notes before we begin. Um, do not turn this problem in as is. I've changed very, very uh, few things in this, but it's just because I, I don't fully know if I'd be violating any copyright laws if I gave you the exact solution that would be the result of the problem from the book. So I don't want to get in trouble and this will be basically how every video is done is where very minor things are changed enough to where I'm not giving you uh, you know the real solution but it, it'll be a you know the problem you see or the solution you see will be I mean as close as you could possibly get to getting the actual solution. <laughs> so um, also, uh, just note that I'm not claiming this is going to give you a, uh, an amazing grade, or any grade for that matter, and um, I'm not claiming this is the best way to do this problem. So if you find that there's a better way and you want to comment, um, feel free to use the section below. Just be very detailed and, as silly as it sounds, explain it on a fifth grade level, because um, what may seem like common sense to you a lot of times is not common sense to many other people and if they don't if they can't follow then your comment becomes useless so just make sure you explain yourself and explain explain it in everyday language uh, let's see yeah let's go ahead and get started um, with all, all the videos I do you'll see the solution listed right from the start so within the first three seconds you can tell if this is the video you need or not your time is valuable and I don't want to waste it uh, so let's uh, let's look at the pseudocode here. I can tell you that this problem only requires a pseudocode or the flowchart. Um, so if you have the pseudocode, you can pretty much make the flowchart. You just need to know the symbols, and that's very, very easy. So the pseudocode will do. Uh, with the pseudocode, you're just explaining how the program is working in human language rather than computer language. And with pseudocode, you don't need to first uh, declare the variables like that's kind of an understood with pseudocode so we'd start right when the person starts interacting or they start seeing the program working through their monitor and that will give us our first one so prompt the user to input a value and that's this area right here the next step is going to be calculate the result with the equation this equation right here so we have our calculation section uh, step number three we output the result and in the program and that's right here. With all these problems, I'm going to give you the, the program coded out so you can see it work. I'm going to run it in just a few seconds here. But um, it's not necessary to turn this in with this problem. I'm pretty sure it only requires the pseudocode or flowchart. So let me go through and explain each section here in the code so you can grasp that as well. This area right here is generated by Xcode. I'm not sure if other programs do that. I know Xcode does. This next section is, uh, these three lines basically start off every, um, every program you're going to code. Then I have the area where I declare my variables, and I've used integer for both of these. You only need two, the value you're going to enter, and the result from this calculation right here. And integer is smaller than the variable uh, double. If you put double here, then you know I would use double when you when you do decimal places, but I'm not going to use any decimal places, so integer is a takes up less space. So I'm going to use those. Then inputs, we enter a value, and the uh, program asks us to plug that in, put in whatever value. Then the calculation is done. So uh, I've made a note here: the book does something different. So whatever value you enter is multiplied by 4, and that is the result of that is stored in the variable result. Then we have our output. Your result is, and then you put the variable result, so whatever stored in result will be shown on the screen. And then you end your program. So let's go ahead and uh, have that run. Oh, and also, if you're not using Xcode, Xcode doesn't need this, but I've noticed that like Microsoft Visual Basics does. I usually put a system pause and this will stop the program from closing down like actually disappearing off your screen 
when you've completed the calculation so you can actually see what the result is. This stops it from closing. It'll stay open until you tell it to close. But we don't need that with Xcode for some reason. And uh, let's go ahead and run it. Okay, so we see how our input enter value is displayed here. And then our CN, so we enter, I'm going to put a 5. And we're going to see if our calculation works. So enter, and then it'll display your result. See, see out, it outputs your result is in whatever stored in the variable result. So our program is working. And uh, I think that's about it for this problem here. Um, all these videos will be done really fast. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> there's a, they get a little bit more complicated as we go. But I hope you uh, stick around after the first three seconds of seeing <clears throat> the video start. I mean, you could obviously just pause it and then look at it and then end it there. But I hope you stick around so I can explain to you how I get the results. And, um, well, thanks for, uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.